Mayor Bloomberg of New York advise in the face of a threat, stay vigilant, be watchful, but don't panic. So we wondered exactly what does that mean each of us should do? Here's ABC's Jim Avila. Since 9-11, Homeland Security says most of the failed terrorist attacks on American soil have been foiled not by super secret intelligence agents, but by average Americans. 70 some odd percent of the detected terrorist acts in this country in the last 10 years were detected by a citizen seeing something that they thought unusual. And this weekend, Americans are on extra alert. I'm wondering if it's going to be safe to go out on uh, September 11th. We and went to Bill Bratton, former police chief in New York, Los Angeles, and Boston, to find out what exactly we should be on alert for. You see somebody walking around the square that's all bundled up on an 83-degree day. That's somebody you want to might be a little mindful of. Across the country Saturday and Sunday, large crowds are expected at college games, and it's opening weekend for pro football. Citizens should be on alert for someone taking pictures or sketching security devices, unusual interest in talking to stadium maintenance personnel, or with questions about air conditioning and ventilation systems. At shopping malls this weekend, watch for someone who wants to get on the roof, or for outsiders who have been paying unusual attention to emergency drills. Multiple false alarms are a red flag, too. 90s. Former Chief Bratton Once says again, at all these crowded places, families should have an escape plan. If something were to happen here, how do I get out of here? Watch for delivery vans and trucks that don't deliver. They're just parked for long periods of time. And watch those trash cans. Something that you might want to be cognizant of, somebody trying to stuff a very large package in there. Americans on the lookout on a weekend when everyone is the first line of defense. Jim Avila, ABC News, New York. And now we move on. Well, as we head into the weekend marking the 10th anniversary of September 11th, the five of us want to take a moment to share a memory of some of those who perished on that faithful day. Uh, for me, Todd Beamer sticks out. I mean, he was a hero. He coined the phrase, let's roll. He saved so many lives in probably Washington, D.C. A lot of my friends who were working in the Dome that day. And it came out, his wife Lisa was on television after he had passed, and she said when he was a child, he drew pictures of an airplane and going down. And he talked about it. It was almost foreshadowing. And he always knew, he was a religious man, that he had a bigger purpose on this earth. And I think that's just such a a hopeful story that God does put special people on this earth to do very special things. Yeah, he's a great guy, yeah. definitely. There's so many people to choose from because so many people rose to the occasion on 9-11 and two individuals, and I kind of put them together because really two great Americans, you see them right there. Frank Martini and Pablo Ortiz are credited together with saving about 50 lives on the 88th floor. Um, ultimately, they perished, and it was their action specifically just showing, you know, no kind of fear whatsoever. Going back in time and time again, they had intimate knowledge of the construction of the buildings. You can hear, actually, their voices on their radio. They were able to communicate effectively and save other lives uh, by communicating with law enforcement and fire department as to where people were trapped and just they really inspirational mm -hmm. stories. Well, I tell you, there's more courage on that one day than I think displayed any other time in history. It's amazing. I, you know, I remember Barbara Olson, who was a Republican, uh, but somebody who I sparred with often on television. I sparred with a lot of Republicans, as you could imagine, but she was always somebody who was had gave a good, decent argument. She never went away angry. She was very agreeable thing. She went down in the plane that hit the Pentagon, and uh, her husband uh, is still alive. Uh, and uh, uh, it was just very tragic. She had a lot of friends, both Democrats and Republicans, and uh, she was just an all-around good person. That's nice, Bob. Um, I was a, uh, a, a, a on the board of directors of a company downtown, and, and uh, we were in that building for 18 years. We had moved out of the building. I was in the, the World Trade Center in 93 when the thing blew up. I was going to work um, that morning and watched the second plane fly into the, the second tower. It came down. Turns out 16 of my close friends were in the building. 16 of them perished. One of them, uh, Tom McGinnis, is <coughs> right here. Good friend. I, I drank a lot of pints of Guinness with that guy. Um, it, it just needs to be said that the families who have been left behind, we should all say prayers for them. We should mm -hmm. all thank them for, um, you know, every, just, just being there. And I, I got to tell you guys, these are the most patriotic people, the people who work to get the, the save some victims mm -hmm. who were actually pulled out of those buildings. And there's not enough time to mention them all, but, but all of them are in our thoughts and in, in our prayers.
I had no close friends that died that day, but my next door neighbors were these really brave guys in Rescue One. Eleven of them died uh, Tuesday morning. I know these guys because they used to play football in front of my building every day, and I always complained when their sirens went off because it would wake me up. And that morning, those sirens blared Tuesday morning, and I remember being really hungover, swearing about it, having no idea that would be the last time that I heard those sirens. And, uh, I mean, they were awesome guys, and I was a jerk. No. Yeah, I mean, no. you know. No. It's, <laughs> I, 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 could, I, could, I know I am. But, you, but you know, that just what, one thing I just wanted to say was that, that uh, you lost a lot of friends. I know you didn't. I, I didn't here in New York, but I still think, though, back in watching television, the number of people who were New Yorkers who flew down there, you know, on foot, on bicycles, whatever, yeah. to lend a hand, it tells you a lot about, I make fun of New York, but it says a lot about New Yorkers generally. Yeah, and, and, and I, and the, I was impressed with that. And the rescue workers ran to the building, not away from it. It's their yeah. heroes. And I think, you know, we sit here, we're Republicans, we're Democrats, a lot of us watching, we argue. Yeah. We tend to take different sides, especially on this network. But I'll tell you one thing, at the end of the day, we're all Americans. Right. We'll never forget. And this country cannot be broken. That's a message that I think we all agree on. That's it. Thanks for watching us. Have a great weekend, everybody. Along with Americans of all faiths, Muslim Americans rushed in to save and rescue victims of Al-Qaeda's terrorism. Let me close with a true story, but remember that it's only one of many American stories that could be told. Mohammed Salman Hamdani was a 23-year-old paramedic, a New York City police cadet and Muslim American. He was one of those brave uh, first responders who tragically lost his life in 9-11 terrorist attacks almost a decade ago. As the New York Times eulogized, he wanted to be seen as an all-American kid. He wore number 79 on the high school football team at Bayside, Queens, where he lived. He was called Sal by his friends. He became a research assistant at the Rockefeller University and drove an ambulance part-time. One Christmas, he sang Handel's Messiah in Queens. He saw all of the Star Wars movies. And it's well known that his new Honda was the one that read with the young Jedi license plates. Mr. Amdani bravely sacrificed his life to try to help others on 9-11. After the tragedy, some people tried to smear his character solely because of his Islamic faith. Some people spread false rumors and speculated that he was in league with the attackers because he was a Muslim. But it was only when his remains were identified that these lies were exposed. Mohammed Salman Hamdadi was a fellow American who gave his life for other Americans. His life should not be identified as just a member of an ethnic group or just a member of a religion, but as an American who gave everything for his fellow Americans. Are you back? I remember how incredibly, amazingly beautiful it was that day. I was in boot camp when I found out. They had the news on, and they mentioned that a plane had crashed into the World Trade Center. On September 11th, I will pray for the safety of the people I love. I will. I will. I will continue to be a volunteer fireman. I will find a way to help someone become more literate. I will remember by planting a tree here at the Flight 93 Memorial. What will you do this September 11th?